SDP rejects APC's win in Ekiti and we take a closer look at how NSA's protests will shape the 2023 elections. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Shagoni, the Ekiti State Governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and his Action Democratic Party counterpart, Mrs. Kemi Elebute Halley, has rejected the results of the Saturday election, saying that the outcome of the elections will be challenged at the tribunal. The SDP candidate said that the results, as declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission, did not reflect the through or the true, I beg your pardon, decision of the people, lamenting that the process was allegedly marred by financial inducement. Well, joining us to discuss this is Moses Jalayemi. He is the Chairman, Media and Advisory Council of the Shegun Oni Campaign Organization. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jalayemi, for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, let's start by, um, you know, backpedaling a bit. Um, last week, just before the elections, I spoke with um, somebody from your campaign who had spoken about the fact that uh, Mr. Oni was being um, targeted. He kept saying that every time you visited different places, um, in his words, you were being targeted by the opposition. And here we are today, a few days after the elections. Uh, the SDP is saying that the results have to be con um, contested because of certain irregularities. Paint a picture to us as to why um, you have rejected the results of the Saturday elections. Thank you very much. I think you started by saying that uh, Shegwoni was being targeted and all that. So, yeah, it wasn't only Shegwoni. The entire media, I mean, sorry, the entire campaign organization uh, was being targeted, you know. And uh, the fact is that APC had always seen uh, the SDP as their major problem, their major headache. So we've been doing everything possible to, you know, suppress, you know, the SDP, which was not possible. Now, going into the election, they decided, you know, to ensure that the wishes of the people uh, they have they they made attempt to thwart, you know, the wishes of the people, you know, with the, with the sham that uh, they called election. It was a cash and carry thing. Uh, they have reduced the state to a marketplace uh, where votes can be sold and bought. So what we saw was vote buying across the entire 16 local governments of the state. And uh, it was also marred by thuggery, uh, ballot box snatching, ballot box stuffing, and all manners of uh, intimidation and uh, the entire process is flawed, and that's why the SDP is rejecting this election. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's a departure from the, uh, the reality on ground, the wishes of people. This is not the reflection of their wishes. I'm sure you must have seen uh, pictures and videos of uh, uh, those who were buying votes who... I mean, the SDC caught some people, they busted into some houses and uh, where money was kept and so on. So a lot of things happened that made this election a mere a mockery, you know. And I think uh, the APC also did a good job of capitalizing on the uh, poverty situation of the Kitty people, which in any case, the cost in the first place. Uh, they deliberately decided to impoverish the place, I mean the people, so that uh, they would be there for their use every four years. And that's what we witnessed. So this was not an election. It I'm, was, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious to ask, uh, as much as you've said that 
there was a lot of vote buying. Uh, they bought the people, and of course, they, that's where they, that's how they arrived at the votes that they have. But let me start by asking: um, if you alleging that there was vote buying, but then people did at least cast their votes, should INEC be um, the ones that we should be speaking to, or should it be the people? Because again. People can be induced, but they can decide. Like you said, there is poverty in Ekiti State. If it's anything to go by, should the people not be in a better position to make the choice of voting for good governance as opposed to um, monetary inducements? I know it's easier said than done, but is it not the people who chose to vote for those people who gave them money? Should INEC be taking responsibility for what happened on Saturday? Yeah, well, the, the, the truth of the matter is uh, you have struck it. You struck the nail on the head somehow by saying that, I mean, it's uh, very, very difficult for somebody who is extremely hungry to be able to ignore money. Don't forget that workers in the state have not been paid for several months. So the, the, the propensity for uh, survival, it's, uh, it's there, you know. Everybody, every human, every living, you know, thing wants to survive. Even a plant who want to go, you know, towards the uh, direction of light, you know, sunlight to manufacture its food. So, what do you say of human beings? There's always that, you know, uh, tendency for people to want to survive any way, anyhow. So... That's about that. INEC is culpable because it deliberately decided to ignore its own electoral rules and laws. It looked the other way. So to that extent, I think they are culpable, just as the security agencies are too. I was, I was they look the other way. I, I was going to ask, as much as INEC is a regulatory body, INEC is there to conduct, make sure that we have free, fair, and credible elections, but they cannot also be playing the role of the enforcement, which is the police, which is security services. Um, INEC cannot leave their job of trying to make sure that people vote to deal with the issue of vote buying. Um, I'm, I'm sure that this conversation has been had on several fora where we talk about whose job it is to deal with vote buying. But then I want to put a direct question to the Shegoni campaign. If you have been campaigning, I'm wondering, what have you been saying to Ekiti people if the large majority, going by what you've said, have been induced by the so-called opposition to get their votes? Does it mean that your voter education or your campaign fell on deaf ears? Well, to be honest with you, uh, it's a very, very hard nut to crack, you know, when you, when you appeal or you preach or you campaign to a very, very hungry person not to take money. I think it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult. We did our best, you know, to tell the people to ignore uh, there's something called the Boko Sebe in Ekiti State, which is take money, I mean, vote for us, take money, and then you can cook a pot of soup. And we've been trying to tell them that a pot of soup that will not last you more than two days should not be uh, used to mortgage your future and the future of your children. I mean, another suffering of four years, if care is not taken eight years, that people should ignore that. But unfortunately, like I said, survival is the first rule for every human. So, the, uh, how will you be able to convince them to actually uh, ignore that very, very uh, tempting 10,000, 7,000? Uh, it's, it's somehow, you know? And you see, why we feel that uh, EFC, sorry, uh, INEC, is generally culpable here is that during the campaign and in our meetings with uh, you know different stakeholders observers international community and all that what we were telling them was that look to effectively control and discourage vote buying then INEC has a duty to ensure that the positioning of the ballot boxes and the, the ballot uh, booths were such, I mean, was such that people would not be able to display 
you know, their ballot papers to the agent who were, in any case, on hand to see that, okay, look, I have done my bit, or I have voted for you. And then the next thing is that the other person, the agent, will now give a nod to another person standing strategically somewhere. And that person will nod to the other person who will now, you know, uh, it will not to another person where the money was. So the person goes in to collect the money. I saw that in my polling, I mean, my polling uh, unit, for example. And I complained. I asked the security agents, what are you doing? Can't you see what's going on here? But they just looked at me and, uh, you know, the guys, they just walked away. To them, what is this guy talking about? Because all of them had been taken care of, presumably, anyway. Because I don't have concrete evidence for that but i didn't see when they were being given money but you see the fact is that when things like that happen you will know that you know something must have uh, gone on uh, under the table so the security agents looked away INEC also helped in ensuring that the vote buying pay was effectively carried out while we were busy campaigning you know going to every nook and corners of the state, all the rallies, all different local governments, you know. In my ward, for example, in the, uh, my place in Okemeti, meetings were being held, uh, rallies, everything. We were campaigning house to house, everything. ABC was just looking at us. I'm sure they would be laughing at us and, uh, you know, you know uh, just jeering at us. That at the end of the day, I mean, they knew what they were going to do. And they had their plan made and they carried it out to the letter. On the day of the election, they simply rolled out multiples of millions. Every polling unit, for example, in the state got, some got up to four million. You know, in my hometown, for example, small polling units like this, you have million, a million naira waiting. I mean, for extremely poor people, that was irresistible. Mm -hmm. So, now this election, you can say safely that INEC, law enforcement agencies, and APC, they did a good job of ensuring that this election was not an election. This is no democracy. And that is the reason we are rejecting the outcome. Okay. This is not the outcome that reflects the wishes of the people is a complete departure. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to argue with you, but let me let me put it side by side. So, in one breath, you're telling me that the people in Ekiti State, in your opinion, have been impoverished deliberately by the government for such a time as this, and so that's why their inducements. And of course, they cannot say no to those inducements. But then you're also saying, in another breath, that this is not necessarily an election that reflects the wish of the people. Where does wish come in here when I have already been paid off to vote for a certain person? I mean, I'm trying to understand how will the wish of the people come to bear if those same people were eager and happy to take inducements, in your words, from so-called opposition? Isn't this okay, the wish of the people already? How do we, how do we yeah. even juxtapose that? Okay, okay, let, let me just add this. Uh, maybe I should have done that before. Those who were, there was another set of people, the civil servants, for instance, they form 40% of the uh, entire population of the state. Those ones were muscled. They were kind of compelled to do the bidding of the ruling party. Okay? This see and buy thing, also played out there. Even if they are not taking money, you must show that you have voted for APC. Okay? Otherwise, your job is on the line. Mm -hmm. Civil service, because it, 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 there is nobody that can, it's, 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 it's difficult to comprehend that work, those who have been owed salaries for months, you know, those whose parents or uncles or aunties or whatever have not been paid their areas of uh, gratuities and pension would then willingly go and vote for a party that has them 
that will go and vote for a party that has continuously keep them in perpetual financial and social bondage. It's not possible. What is the score, what is the scorecard of ABC in the state? Tell me, what is their scorecard? What can they claim, lay claim to that they have done successfully in the state for which anybody will want to uh, put them in? So people's hands were tied, you know, at their backs. They had no choice. So it's not like this is what they would ordinarily uh, have done. And that tells you why that speaks to the fact that as we speak now, no jubilation in anywhere in a state. Don't forget that excitement, happiness, jubilation is spontaneous. It's not something you plan for. You don't have to set committee for you to tell people to be happy. The election result was announced. You would have expected the, the entire, you know, uh, all the streets in a state to erupt in jubilation. But what you are seeing now is everywhere is calm. There, there, is, there is sadness on the faces of the people that what is this, what, are we, what, is, what is happening to us. There is no celebration. And APC that we know, <laughs> if anything, if they, are, if they achieved anything, within the next one minute, the entire streets are full. Everywhere is full with tribulation. But what do we have now? They are probably setting up committees, uh, uh, asking people to come from different local government. You know, they will pay for for their transportation to come to Adwoki to come and jubilate. You don't plan for jubilation. You don't plan for excitement. Okay. You don't plan for for happiness. It, you, it, 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 it shows and it's spontaneous. You exude it. It, it comes out natural, but. What do you see in Ekiti State now? There is no jubilation everywhere. I mean, anywhere. Okay. That tells you that what has happened to them, you can say there is peace now, but I liken that to peace of the graveyard. Nobody is happy okay. about it. Okay. So it's not a reflection of their wishes at all. I, I, I just want to push you further. I mean, this the, we can use Ekiti as a litmus test. We were going to obviously use Ekiti State elections as... Um, and Austrian state elections as um, a litmus test for what we, we should expect in 2023. And so let me ask this question. Judging from what we've seen, because of course we had seen a lot of young people, um, many Nigerians, tripping out to INEC to get their PVCs because they're very eager to vote for good governance. But from what you have painted, the picture that you've painted, I'm sure that when we have the APC campaign committee here, they would tell us something different. But from what you have said to us, what does 2023 hold for Nigerians? What's the guarantee that people will vote right? I mean, because this is just the state elections, and we, according to you, there have been inducements, uh, there's been electoral violence. In fact, somebody um, said that um, um, she could have ordinarily accepted um, you know, the um, win of Governor uh, uh, Mr. Biodo Yebanji, but she said, in spite of the various programs and media publicity against vote buying, she said the APC, the PDP, and your party, the SDP, promoted and encouraged uh, corruption, both at the grassroots and the state levels. Now, this is also indicting you. Um, so, I'm asking a general question here. If this is what's happening in just a state election, what should we um, be looking forward to in the general elections come next year? I sincerely hope Nigerians would uh, uh, think better. I sincerely hope they will not fall for this uh, tokenism, this uh, 5,000, 10,000 naira, because uh, the, the presidential candidate of uh, APC reportedly came to Ekiti State and, almost, and kind of officially endorsed the vote buying thing. He told them in Yoruba that, uh, you know, if you don't uh, thumbprint, uh, if you don't put your finger on the ballot, you cannot put your finger on the money, you know, which is a uh, uh, a direct allusion to uh, 
food buying. Okay? So that's what it came to do. I'm sure I have a feeling that that, in a way, energized the, the, the APC uh, fellows here who felt that, okay, I mean, this is now official. So they went to town with that. So I sincerely hope Nigerians will look better. They will, they will, they will think better and look beyond this uh, ephemeral reprieve of uh, whatever uh, 5,000, 10,000. I don't know how much they are going to uh, roll out in 2023. But there is a lot of danger in voting for money mm. because it's like you are, you are voting to sentence yourself to another four years or whatever years of slavery. Okay. So I, we, my advice to Nigerians is that they should look well and uh, like they say in Lagos, shine your eyes and ensure that you know you vote your conscience, vote your mind, vote the right person that you know can turn around the fortunes of Nigeria. All right, what we are experiencing now is not something that anybody will wish for this country. The country is a uh, uh, this is this is not what we thought. I mean, we never we never envisaged, we never dreamt Nigeria could be what it is now. That's why we stayed here, believing that it will get better. But unfortunately, okay. it's getting worse by the day. All right, quickly before I let you go, I I, I told you that the ADP candidate um, actually accused your party, the PDP and the um, um, APC, of vote buying. Uh, both at the my party, yes. my party is SDP, not yeah. PDP. No, no, she 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 indicted your party, the APC and the PDP. So all three parties. She's saying she saw a level of inducement and vote buying. I, I'd like to quote her directly. She said, in spite of the various sensitization programs and media publicity against vote buying, the APC, the PDP, and the SDP actually, in her words, promoted, encouraged corruption both at the grassroots and the state levels. I'd like to get your uh, response to that. And finally, what is the end game? The SDP is saying they want to go to court. What do you hope to get at the end of the day? What we hope to get at the end of the day is outright uh, cancellation of this sharp. Then on the issue of uh, SDP joining in the corruption and inducement, I beg to disagree with uh, the report of uh, uh, that person because uh, we didn't have provision for that. We're not sharing money. And uh, all along, I think APC itself used to uh, mock us and jeer at us that, uh, oh, don't mind them. The reason they are campaigning against both buying is because they don't have money. They say Shegun doesn't have money and all that and all that. Yes. Jeb Bonnet has not stolen money. He has not uh, amassed wealth like uh, all the other guys that have passed through here. So uh, he's, I think he's the only former governor who doesn't have uh, his account beaming, beaming with uh, billions and he doesn't have properties strewn all over the country and uh, other parts of the world. That's fine. But he has integrity, he has name, he has track record, and that is what you know, uh, uh, ignited the interest of the people. You need to see the crowd that uh, was following us everywhere we went, not induced, not bought. They really, really wanted a change. They wanted a reprieve. They wanted a fresh breath of life, which APC is attempting to, you know, uh, uh, take off them. But we are going to challenge the, this. Uh, okay. This sham. So you're saying. So you're saying, just for the record, that the ADP candidate, the lady in question, is lying because I'm guessing that somebody of that caliber would not be putting out such information if she does not have evidence of vote buying. I'm just saying. Would are you saying outrightly here on national television that the ADP governorship candidate told a lie about the SDP, the APC, and the PDP vote buying both at state and local government levels? Well, I am not omnipotent. I couldn't have been everywhere. I voted in my hometown, Okemetsekiti, and I can tell you for free that we were not sharing money. I'm a party chief. So, so you agree that there could, be, have, there could have been a possibility that some SDP 
um, party of members were inducing people at certain polling units since you were not at what, the other polling units? What I'm saying is based on your insistence and the fact that somebody of uh, the person's caliber, blah, 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 and I'm saying to you, because what I know is what I'm going to say to you, apart from being a politician, I'm a journalist. And then when in doubt, you find out, you cannot find out, you leave out. So I'm not ready to be here on national television to feed the people with falsehood. What I have seen in Okemezi, which is the microcosm of the rest of the state, is that we did not share money. If there was money to share, I should know about it. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you. Moses Jalayemi is the Chairman, Media Advisory Council, Shegwani Campaign Organization. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we will discuss how the NSAS protest might shapen the 2023 general election. Stay with us.